It is all good in the hood. Jesse Cole is in the house. Jesse, welcome to the show. What's up, man? You good? You know, I am good, man. You know, and, and what's in my head right now is, um, and that's why I love talking about Jesse Cole, man. Jesse Cole, he's got a lot of light, a lot of, uh, you're like a magnet of truth and wisdom, and you allow me to clear some of the fog in my head, and we're just going to, like I said, uh, you know, before, for everybody listening, uh, welcome to the Positive Side Podcast. Jesse Cole is in the house. Jesse helped me write my book. Uh, so if you're looking to write a book, uh, it, again, it's a no-brainer. Uh, you only go to Jesse Cole. Uh, don't even look at anybody else. Uh, he helped me work through some demons I had to work through. And um, he's not only uh, my book coach, but he's uh, one of my personal friends, and I love him to death. So, uh, Jesse, obviously, welcome to the show. Um, but, you know, I, I, there's so many things going on. And I, I try and navigate my way through the chaos of life. Sometimes I feel like I'm just, um, there's, so, so I guess it's more reactionary versus, um, uh, what, what do you call it? A reactive versus proactive. I, I'm being more reactive right, right now than I'm being proactive. What do you tell somebody in my situation? Uh, you know, and again, not break my arm, pat myself on the back. I'm relatively successful. I'm a general manager now of a, a, a decent sized Nissan Infinity store. I'm working hard. I got a lot of people that rely on me and rely on that mental attitude every single day. There's no no time for leaders sometimes to shut off. Uh, we take that in consideration with uh, you know family being pulled in different directions. Mm -hmm. You know the situation that I'm living in. Uh, you know I've got three kids. Uh, a, a lot comes at me. What helps you? And what do you coach and tell your people to do to help get through this season of life? Well, you know, that's that's a big question, um, because as you as you just admitted, you know, you were talking about all these different things that are coming your way. You're a father, right? you're a friend, you're a leader at your job, you're a business owner, you're a podcaster, you're an author. You have all of these different buckets um, that uh, that you have to give yourself to. Right. And oftentimes we look at our life as these different silos of all these different things. Right. And so one thing that I try to encourage um, my clients is to look at their life um, as what one of my coaches called an intentional congruence. Everything flowing in the same direction. So it's not, you're not all over the place. You don't have these different silos. Everything that you do, it has to flow in the same direction. So really establishing mm -hmm. a rhythm in your life. Like everybody's gonna have their own rhythm. Everybody's gonna have their own flow. So I think a big question you have to ask yourself is, you know, what, what is, what is my rhythm? Like, what do I want that to look like? Um, do I, do I want to be all over the place or do I, do I want to have peace? You mentioned that leaders never shut off. Well, I, I totally disagree with that. I believe that as leaders, we have to re, we, we, we have to shut yeah. off. We have to distance ourselves from the fray, from the, from the confusion. We have to get away for this reason so that we can replenish because as leaders, we're always pouring. And if we're yeah. always pouring and then we get empty, then we can, we can never pour again, right? So leadership is not about what I can get from you. It's about, what I, it's about what I can get to you. So if I don't have anything in me, I can't get anything to you. So you have to kind of take, take some steps back and rest and replenish so that you can serve at a higher capacity. How do you refresh and replenish? Uh, and, 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 you know, obviously you're a father, husband, business owner, author of a jillion books. I mean, coach, you're doing so many things. How does Jesse Cole actually hit the reset button? Yeah. So um, that, that's a good question, too. Before last year, I felt like I had to, like, um, always be on, like, team no sleep, right? If you're an entrepreneur, yeah. if you're an entrepreneur, you got to always be on. Like, you can't. When, when you're sleeping, your mind is still going. And so I learned how to like really rest in my faith. Um, there's this scripture that I, that I, that I really buy into um, in Matthew, Matthew 11, 30, it talks about the unforced rhythms of God's grace. And it's really talking about operating in God's grace versus operating in man's grind, right? We live in a mm -hmm. grind culture. We live in a hustle culture. If you're, if you're not doing something, the world says you're lazy. But, but those of us who are believers, no matter what level of believer you are, those of us who have a spiritual foundation understand that we get our best work done when we are resting. Resting doesn't mean 
that you're not doing anything. It just means that you relinquish your own agenda to the flow of the master, right? And so me, how I, how, how I replenish is always trying to find that flow, always trying to be in flow um, with, 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 with God, because I know that he is my sustainer. He's my provider, right? I don't have to worry about anything. He, he is my God. And so if I'm in flow with him, everything I need will be provided for me versus me trying to manufacture, manufacture activity and trying to put my hands on everything. I relinquish all that stuff to him and say, okay, God, what is your best for me? Like, what do I need to do? I have this business deal. I need, I need, I need to close. Like, what do I need to say? And as he, as he's giving me direction, I'm doing it under his flow and not my own flow. Um, you know, it, it's so many things to pull out of there. Uh, the first thing I, I pulled out of there and I got these, you know, my mind, bro. I mean, you know me better than damn near anybody. My mind goes in all kinds of crazy ass directions. And, uh, well, the first thing you said, you were exactly right. I've got this trip coming up in, um, in December. I'm going to, it's a business trip. I'm going to uh, park city, Utah for a week. And, um, you know, we're done at 1230 every day, but like, this is my chance. Uh, I've thought about what am I going to do with these extra hours? Like, I, you know, from 1230 to 530 before dinner, what do I do all day? And maybe this is the calling that I needed to, to actually hit the reset button and kind of slow down and not try and look for something else to do, but just kind of slow down. Yeah, man. The, the other thing that I, I, when you started quoting your scriptures, this is one of the reasons I love having you on the show. Now you, you and I have talked about this. I'm agnostic at best. I respect you and your faith more than, I mean, anything. And you know that we've, we've had these conversations. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the conversations that we had a long time ago, I asked you, um, and you may not even remember this question. This has been years ago. I asked you, um, people said that, uh, that God talks to them. And I said, what does God sound like? And, and you told me that God is different voices, but a lot of times God comes in your voice. So when you hear that, when you, cause lots, a lot of times that's, that's the sound of the voice that we most, most recognize is, our own voice. And maybe sometimes that's God's voice talking to us uh, in a way that's going to work best for us. Um, several questions. And this is, I love having Jesse Cole on the show. Dang it. This is so good. And I love getting into the faith questions with you because I can ask you anything. And, and you know, for me, man, it's coming from a place of love and questions and, can, and uh, just wanting to learn. And uh, you, my friend, are one of the most uh, solid faith people I've ever met in my life. And I respect the hell out of you for that couple things when it comes to faith. And, and, and I'm going to pull some of this uh, societal issues in here, and we'll try and make it relevant for some of the people listening. Um, I got into um, a conversation, this has been a few months ago, about, um, about the ethnicity of Jesus. Now, Typically, when we see pictures of Jesus, and I, I know this is totally random and totally off <laughs> off tangent, but it, but it's 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 a it's a thing I've been I've been thinking about it, and I thought whoever who better to ask than you, you see all these pictures of Jesus being a white guy. Yeah. He is a white guy, long hair, and he's you know handsome. The guy's good looking. He's a good looking dude. I'm like, man, that dude's cool looking. Um, but in reality, chances are Jesus wasn't white, and um, I, I would I would guess that he was Middle Eastern based on the areas of, you know, of, of Jerusalem, Israel, where he was born in Bethlehem, I would, I would assume these are all Middle Eastern areas. Yet here we are in a society with, if, and if I try and tie it back into, uh, you know, it's something to date with race things, yeah. black, white, this, everybody fighting over uh, whether it be Black Lives Matter or people like for it and against it. But if, if, we as a society, I would say most people are a faithful uh, of, of faith, whether it's Christian, Catholic, Buddhist, I mean, you name it. I would say majority of the people in the United States are that. How do we decide to like what I get frustrated with is when people argue about race and then they're faithful. How can you be faithful and then argue about race, whether you're black or you're white? If Jesus himself, and we don't know what, and again, race doesn't even come, play, come and play with, with God. God's not a, a white guy on a cloud with a white beard. Okay, I can firmly say with all positivity that he, that is not God. Okay, that doesn't exist. And Jesus wasn't a white guy. 
I have a hard time feeling and, and, and having conversations with people that are arguing race on either side of the story. Yeah. Um, it's like they almost want to just get their point across, yet they go to church on Sunday. Well, God told me this, and Jesus this, and God that. Jesus isn't white or black. It's a sign, and then this is what I, I like about faith, and I'm going to try and tie this all together, though, these random little changes I'm going on. If Jesus and God, and I would say most people are believer of a higher power of God, um, if we don't know what race is, but we believe there's a higher power, how do we argue and fight when we're all on this planet and on, on a journey together? Um, I, I guess, I, and again, maybe there's not even a question to this. It's just more of a random tangent. I can get frustrated when I see people arguing about these things and fighting and all the hate. And, 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 and you know, hey, to be honest, some of the worst people I know are the people that go to church on Sundays. And, and I, don't, I just don't understand it. So as, a, as agnostic at best, I, I, I guess I, I want more want your opinion and, and clarity of where society is, man, because it's so confusing to me. And obviously you could tell for the last five minutes I've been talking about, I'm so damn confused about what the hell is going on with life. But why can't we just, you know, as Rodney King said, why can't we just get along? You know, I mean, I love you as a brother. I don't even, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, purple, green. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I just love, man. I just love my my fellow man, my fellow woman, uh, poor people, rich people. It doesn't matter what you look like. I just love, man. Yeah. And how do we get back to that? Like, where do we go next? I don't know. I think is the society too broken? I no, just don't, I don't know about don't, a lot of I, stuff going I, I, on. I don't think. And you're right. You know, you went a lot of places. But here's here's the thing. You you just said something that pretty much sums up the main idea of Jesus. You just said. I just love, right? And that God is love, right? And so understanding, I believe that if, if we really understand the purpose of Jesus and the characteristics of God, and we, and we implement those characteristics into our life, that's when a real relationship begins. It's for, for me, like I grew up in a, I grew up in a, in a church house. My father was a minister and my mother was a Sunday school teacher. First one there, last one to leave at church three or four times a week. So I grew up in that stuff. And even as a kid, I'm like, it's, there's got, it got to be more than just these formalities. It has to be more than just arguing and fighting over who's right and who's wrong. Like, there's, there's got to be a deeper reason to why we're doing this. And it wasn't until I went off to college that I began to realize how important a relationship was. That it was so much bigger than going to church every Sunday or saying the right things, or, you know, it, it was, it was about what does my relationship look like um, with God? And as any other relationship, relationship, the more that, the more, the more time I spend with him, the more I get to learn his character. And the more I get to learn his character, the more I realize how much of him I need on the inside of me. Right. These, 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 they're, they're called the, the fruit of the spirit, right? Fruit of the spirit, you know, love, um, long suffering, like all of these fruit of this, it's like nine fruit of the spirit that we can actually implement into our life. And the more we do that, the more we be, the more we become like Christ. So, you know, to answer your question about the whole, you know, color thing, like, yes, you know, if, if, if Jesus was his, his nationality, where, where, where he grew up in the world, there were darker people. I mean, the, the Bible talks about he has, you know, hair like wool and his feet are burnt like brass. Right. And so that that sounds like a black man to me because of where he was. But yeah. does it really. But for me, it's like, OK, as as a as an identity piece, I can identify with that because he kind of looks like me. But from a sure. characteristic piece it's like it don't even matter to me because. It's about the relationship. Right. Yes, I have a black experience. You have a white experience, and we kind of and we can kind of muddy the waters with with those experiences. But when it comes down to it, what are the characteristics of Christ? What did what did he teach when he was on earth? He taught love. He said he said I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, right? That Zoe life, that life to the full. That that's why he came. 
And so no matter what you look like, no matter your race and nationality, if you are a believer, like that is what we need to take on. His characteristics. And the more we take on his characteristics, the more we become like him. And the less of the world can, the less the world can like penetrate that. Right. And so again, it's, it's not about church. It's not about religion. It's about relationship, which goes back to the first question you asked me. Like just like, how do you find like all the stuff you're doing? Like, how do you find your 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 space? How how do you rejuvenate? And I said, relationship. Yeah. It, it goes back to that, man. You know, you said something very interesting. You said the more I get to know him and what he's like, it's it's like you're putting a a human quality on God. It's like he's he's your buddy sitting next to you on the couch having a beer. Um, question on that is, how do you have those conversations? Um, do you are, are you sitting here watching football and all of a sudden God pops in and says, "What well, Jesse? What's up? We got to work on this." Does it is it intentional? Are you sitting on that couch in the back of your room there and saying, "Okay, this is my time." Uh, God, come to me and let's have a conversation. And do you work through those things in your head? Um, what does that situation look like? So all, all, all that you just said, all of that, right? So, <laughs> I, all right. so I, I, have, um, I have some intentional time and sometimes I'm faithful to it. Sometimes I'm not, I'm not but, uh, but I'm aware. I have some intentional time where I come on this couch, like you said, and I'm like, okay, God, like, what, what, what is our day going to look like? like? Like, what do you need from me today? Like, what are you saying? And sometimes it's something deep, like you need to work out some unforgiveness. And I'm going to show you how to do that, right? Other times it's like, okay, son, you need to clean your office up. Or you need to go wash that load of clothes. Or you need to go tell your son you love him and give him a hug, right? And so, like, that whole relationship piece, right? That, that intentional piece. Sometimes I can be driving, and I, I feel the urge to turn the radio off because I know that he wants to speak to me as I'm driving. Sometimes it comes through me listening to music. Sometimes it comes through a coaching, um, a, a coaching experience, a coaching session where I'm having a session with a, with, a, with a client and they're talking. And as they're talking, I'm getting downloads to give back to them, right? And so I like, there, there's, this, there's this song that I learned as a kid called I Come to the Garden Alone, right? And it's one of the most intimate songs about, about, about God that I've ever, I've ever, ever heard in my life. And the chorus goes, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known, mm -hmm. right? So just imagine, oh, I got the chill. So just imagine somebody like God coming down to you and saying, hey, Jeremy, let's, let's, let's go for a walk. I, I want to talk to you. Like the, the, Bible, the Bible says, we're, we're, like he calls us his friends. Like you and I are talking right now, like he calls us his friends and we don't have to, he's not far away from us. He's not this big monster in heaven waiting to pounce on us when we do something wrong. Like he is walking with us every single day through every situation, good, bad, ugly. He knows your good thoughts. He knows your bad thoughts. He knows what you need to work out in your heart. He knows all that stuff. He was there when you went through traumatic experiences. He knows. He knows. And the fact that he knows and he cares and loves you enough to bring you through that stuff. Come on, man. What, what other friend can do that? What other, like he's, he's a, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Like he <laughs> wants to have that relationship with us, man. He wants that. No, and, and no matter where you are in your faith walk, he there, whether you're at the beginning, I know you mentioned that you're agnostic. So if, when I hear that, when, when, when I hear that, I'm, when I hear that, I'm like, okay, Jeremy's searching. Cause you're not, because, <laughs> because you're not standing still, even, even though you, you're not Correct. standing still, like, but but you're right. you're trying to figure it out like like what does this mean for me and you're in a good place correct or whether whether or whether you're somebody who is super spiritual right that's been walking with God for fifty years and you think you know him like it doesn't matter where you are in your in your journey 
he's there. He's omnipresent. He's present everywhere. He's omniscient. Like he's all knowing, omnipresent. Like he's all that. So you can't get away from him. So since you can't get away from him, you might as well engage with him at your level. <laughs> I really love that. And you're so right because I, I, I am agnostic. Uh, again, I, I believe there's a higher power. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't, my tiny little brain it can't process all the information, all the crazy things out there that uh, there's just so much out there yeah. that I, I just, it's hard to grasp your mind around the galaxies, the, the different planets, the universes, aliens, black holes. I heard, read something the other day that the, the moon was hit with multiple black holes at some point. I mean, like how that's the stuff I get in trouble with. Like when I go back to faith, like, Okay, well, I was born and raised Catholic, mm -hmm. and and again, and you know, I think the Catholic religion's got major flaws. No disrespect, but I think with the guilt thing, with 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 being a Catholic, and that's I think that pushes people away. And and we can get into other issues, but I'm, and that's not my point. I guess my point is that um, I just have so many questions, and I've never heard anybody really answer any of the questions. So so I mean, for example, the um, uh, I guess. This is year 2021. 2022 is coming soon. We got BC, before Christ, before that. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. The oldest religion, if I'm not mistaken, is right around uh, um, written is 10,000 years old. If I look at and this is this is this is real shit. This is this is where I get um, caught up on things. Mm -hmm. If that's a fact and we look at. And again, call me silly, call me what you want, but we look at dinosaurs been around for a hundred million years, and that's just a hundred million years. What happened a hundred million billion years before that? Did it start? See, in, you know, in in Genesis in the Bible, um, I just I, I I find that hard to believe. I don't really think that's based on science. I I don't. I don't see that happening. I don't see I, there, there's just a lot of other questions out there. And that leads me more away from being a, um, a believer than non-believer uh, because of, again, no disrespect because of science. I, I just, what, what is out there beyond this galaxy? Did God make all of these galaxies instantly? And if God made all these galaxies instantly by carbon data and all these things, millions and millions and millions and millions of years, years ago, but Jesus was here a couple, couple thousand years ago. Ain't no, ain't no big deal. A couple of thousand years ago, where was he millions and millions and millions of years before that? When is he, you know, I hear all the time he's coming back. When is he coming back? Is he coming back millions and millions and millions and millions of years from now mm -hmm. is he coming back <laughs> sounds so stupid but again this is all the shit i think about <laughs> is he coming back next week and is and how's he going to show up yeah. is he going to show up in new york city wearing a robe walking down the street is he going to be wearing a suit looking jeet out is he going to have military presence so some crazy nut job doesn't try and go assassinate him or does he control all these things does he control like what, what, what all, how does that all pull into this narrative of God or Jesus is coming back? Uh, he sent his son once he's, he's going to come back and he's going to, uh, what's the, there's a prayer. Um, uh, he's going to come back to judge the living and the dead. Um, what does that look like? Uh, is, are we all line getting in one big, huge, multi-line, gigantic line with a billion people in it? And he's just going to be like, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're in, you're out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And again, this is how stupid my, well, these are the stupid things that go through my head. Um, but it's the questions that keep coming up. And I don't know if, I, I bet there's a lot of other people that have those same questions. Um, and the more you find out with science and Mars and the planets and the galaxies and all these things that have been out there for millions and millions of years, yet Jesus came to Earth 2,000 years ago, and God's, God's been here. He's hanging out, and he made all this stuff that we're not going to know anything about. 
we don't know shit about uh, for the for the infinite galaxies. All we know is that Jesus sent or God sent Jesus here to the Middle East and healed some few, few people. He, I think he would, and again, I'm butchering this, but I think he uh, was he crucified at like age 35 ish. Maybe I don't remember. Um, like how to like why like how does that all add up? And those like are the questions the, that I have. A lot like, to unpack there. Yeah, like these are all <laughs> these are all valid questions that I have no answer to. Um, and uh, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an archaeologist. I haven't even invested enough time to be able to speak to your your questions intelligently. All right. But one thing that I do have control of is how I engage and how I operate while I'm here. So whether something happened billions of years ago, maybe Jesus is going to come back 2000. I know I'm not going to be here. So like while, while I'm here, I know that I need to make the best of my relationship with him. There's a scripture that says, without faith, it's impossible to please him, right? He didn't say, with, you know, you have to be intellectually smart in order to please him. He didn't say, you got to do a whole lot of works in order to please me. He, didn't, he said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And like, what is faith, right? What like faith is having a strong belief in something that you haven't even seen yet. Hoping for something you haven't seen yet, but you're so secure in it that you stick and stay, right? Like that's, that's what faith is. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't sure. know what's going to happen next week. I don't know what's going to happen when, when we get off of this podcast in the next 15, 20 minutes. But what I do have control over is being present, right? What I do have control over is engaging with you while I have my time with you. And so, I mean, just to, just to try to make it a lot, um, to take some of the pressure off, right? Because I know, you know, sure. you said you're not a believer. Maybe somebody that's listening right now might have the same kind of questions. I want to I let you yeah. know if you're listening, your questions are valid. And the fact that you have questions lets me know that you're searching. So yes. keep searching. But also remember this. If you really want to have a relationship with God, if you really want to be a believer, it's going to require faith. Not just intellect, but faith. Well, let me ask you this. And that's, that's, one of, that's one of the things that a lot of people have an issue with because, well, if I don't know what's going to happen, I have no control over it. Well, they, it, that's what faith is. You, you believe that there's a higher power. You believe that God has control over it and that you just have to be obedient. Do you think, and this is another question I always have, um, is it, is faith subconsciously the human brain just believing that there is something better because it's hard. It's like a defense mechanism in the, and again, this is the shit I think about brother. I mean, again, I'm not trying to be a weirdo and, and crazy and stuff like that, but is it a defense mechanism that when life gets extremely, extremely difficult, mm -hmm. it gives people a sense of comfort uh, uh, to, to believe. And, and again, yeah. to believe that there is something better out there because I, I tie that into when you get ready to die and you know, if all the longtime listeners out there know, I always ask random dying questions and I don't know why I thought about this today, the side rant that I talk about this a lot. And I'm always curious, like, am I, the reason do I, is the reason I have these weird conversations about death. This is so morbid and I'm not trying to be negative. I promise you is the reason I have all these conversations about death is, is it because I'm going to die young? That's a weird feeling to have and a weird thought to have. I've never told anybody that, but now I've just let told me, thousands of people that, but, let, but let, I let, think let, about let, that let, a lot. Let me ask you a question about faith because even though it might seem like a big cosmic or this big concept that's hard to grasp, we engage with faith every single day. You and I, we're on this podcast and we're sitting in chairs. It took faith for us to sit in these chairs. 
Sure. We, we believed that when we sat our butts in these chairs, that this chair would hold us up. That took faith. It took sure. faith. When, 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 when you sent me the Zoom link, that when I clicked on that link, that I would see your face on the other side of this computer. That took faith. Like every like everything that we do, it takes. I, I know you you work in the um, in the car industry, yeah. and I'm I'm not sure if you ever were a salesman before, but oh, yeah. whenever when whenever somebody walks on your lot, and you see them looking at the cars, and you know that you got to go out there and engage with them, it takes faith for a car salesman to engage in conversation with a possible uh, customer to sell that car. It takes faith. So everything that we do takes, it takes faith to pick up a phone, to mm. make a phone call, to try to close a sale. Like that takes faith. It does. So everything, everything that we do requires us to believe in something, to believe in the end result, but it requires us to show up and to engage in order to get that end result. Right. And so sure. faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And, and, and that's why I always say I am um, not an atheist. I'm agnostic at best because there have been things in my life that I can't explain how they happen. I, uh, um, certain things will happen to me and for me, good and bad, because typically some of the bad things that happen, I look back in retrospect thinking to myself, how in the world did that possibly happen? Uh, that happens to me. Um, I mean, who knows? I, I would, you know, of course, my ego telling me more than to, to me, more than other people. And, um, you know, that's ego speaking for sure. But may, maybe I don't I don't know. And, and maybe I'm it's maybe it's because I'm um, and, and this is some stuff that I tell maybe because I'm more aware and I'm, I'm looking for these things that I see these things that are happening. Um, and then immediately after that, and I was like, well, what, are, what is the probability? Maybe it was just a random chance. And I, and I don't believe that because obviously based on this conversation tonight, I analyze the hell out of everything. And, and, and I, I think about these things, the opportunities that have come to me, but not only the opportunities, it's just the most random things. You know, you hear stories about, um, you know, uh, someone walking out in the street and then someone just grabbing them un uh, like unconsciously before they walk in front of a car and get killed. Uh, that, that if they didn't, if they weren't there at that exact point to stop another person from getting hit by a car, um, they would be dead. And I, and I tell people this all the time too. And, and this is what I truly, I truly believe this is, this is weird about me is that I'm I, I, again, agnostic at best, but I always believe when someone like if I get stopped by a train or someone cuts me off or I hit a red light or, I, I tell myself the reason I hit that if I'm in a hurry is because whatever the higher being is, God, the universe, whatever that is, I don't know what would happen if I would have made it through that and get T-boned by somebody coming the other way. Mm -hmm. I, perfect example. I was at a funeral and this has been um, six months ago. I swear to you, my life flashed before my eyes. I was driving in a funeral procession. And I, my brother was in front of me driving in a different car and I was behind him. And for whatever reason, I tapped the brakes. And as soon as I tapped the brakes, a car went 50 miles an hour, blew the light and blew the, the funeral procession line. And I swear to you, I, I like it still gives me chills to this day, because if I would have been f five feet ahead of that, I would have been I probably would have died. I mean, flat out because it would have smashed me right on the driver's side. It would have been all TKO. It would have been over check your bags at the door, it'd have been over. Those are the things that keep me agnostic. It's the little things. And that's why I think, that's why I enjoy our conversation. That's why I love having these questions because I, you are right. I am working my way through this. And I've been working my way through this my entire life. I'm 43 years old now. And I worked through it. I probably, I, I would honestly say that I think about this stuff every day. Uh, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about is there a god is there a higher being what happens life after death why am i here uh i don't miss a day it like it, it keeps me up sometimes at night i don't miss a day and then i think to myself is that god uh challenging me in my own way in my own jacked up way but it's my way my jacked up way 
to continue to challenge and push me to ask the questions to make me stronger in faith? I don't know that answer, but I am open-minded to it. And, and I enjoy having these conversations with you. That's one of the reasons I love having you on the show, uh, because it expands my thought process of, is there a God or is there not a God? What is life like after death? Do I come back? Am I just, do I just go to heaven? Um, that's one question I always struggle with as well. I struggle with it badly, but then, but again, here, another, another thing, and I know I'm going on a tangent, but I can promise you, everyone listening to this podcast has probably had that weird feeling where someone else may be in the room. There's an energy, there's a soul, there's God, there's an angel, there's a past loved one in the room with you. Or in or what I mean, you you place that you place yourself in that situation for everybody out there listening. I would bet everyone's had that situation happen to them at least once. If they're honest with themselves, they've had that happen once in their life. How do you define that? And that's why I have questions. How do you define that? Like that is that like um, scientifically, you can't describe that. You can't prove that. Um, but it's real. I mean, it's real as the day is long. I'm in a building right now that they say is haunted. And, and I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I came in this morning to my, or just about 20 minutes ago, or before we started this podcast, my office, my door was open and my vision board was thrown on the ground. I'm looking at it right now. I put it back on the wall. I came the time before and I have this crystal that I always have up here. Uh, one of the guests uh, gave this to me. And I found this crystal thrown in the corner of the, of the room. Who in the hell is going to throw this crystal in the corner of the room, number one? But, but again, I know, I'm, I know I'm going on a little bit of a tangent, but if, if that is real, whatever that is, whatever that is, there has to be more to this life than this physical form that we live in. And if that's the case, and I believe that, if that's the case, what goes on next? And that's why when people say that, well, I just die and the lights go out. I don't know. I, I, I understand that argument. I can see that side of it. But there's just too much other things going on. Like when you say I have questions, I have questions about all kinds of things about the Bible says and how long it's been around and what's going on with the universe and the galaxies and all. So I can question all that side, but, but, but to be fair, if I'm going to question all that, I also need to question this other side of the, of the story because that's real to me as well. Like when I walk out, does something, you know, do I get hit by a bus or do I like haul back or not? Do I have a bigger purpose here is when is my time, my time. These are the things that go through my head. And this is why I question faith. This is why I'm agnostic. And this is why I'm open-minded to all these things. I'm, and, and you said, again, I, I, you said exactly right. I'm working my way through this. And I think it's important to have questions. I got a and question I, for you. Okay. You have a, <laughs> I love I it. Let me, hear, let me hear your question. Yeah. Um, I'll ask my question after I make this statement. Okay. Um, we all have our own journey. Right. Um, my journey is not going to look like your journey. Um, and so whatever your journey is, just know that you're on it and embrace it and remain open to receiving information that totally goes against what you've learned up until this point. Sure. All right. Second, you've talked a lot about what you don't believe and you have a lot of questions about, you know, a, a lot of um, you've been like really antagonizing the journey a little bit right mm -hmm. so my, my question to you is you told me what you don't believe but what do you believe what do i believe that's a very good question um hmm. and i and i take heed in that question because what I what goes to my mind when you say what do I believe is making me make the decision that I believe there is life after death. And I would say I pro I do believe that. I really do. 
And I believe there's a higher power out there. There has to, again, I, I, when you say it that way, it's like, um, it's such an easy question, right? Um, but, oh man, how do I answer that question? What do I believe? Like, what, what do you believe about not life after death, not about what came before you, but what do you believe about right now? Like this moment in time right now where you're living, like, what did you believe about this? Because we like, we, we, we can, we can talk about the past. We can talk about history and have questions about history. Valid. We can talk about what's coming after us and the what ifs. Valid. These are all valid questions, but in between what's ahead of us and what's behind us is now. And this is, this is the only thing we have control over is like right now. So what is driving your right now? Are you just waking up in the morning, letting life happen to you? Or are you, do, are you, are you moving with intention? Are you, are you a creature of habit to where I know I get up at six o'clock in the morning, do, I do this, I do this, I do this. And then I come home at 10 o'clock and then I crash. Like, like what, is, what is driving you throughout your day? What do you believe? It's a very good question because at this point in my life, I don't know. It's a very, that's a great question. Again, I'm glad you broke it down that way. I'm working a lot of hours and I'm supporting and helping people grow in their careers. I'm, I'm, I'm supporting my family. What's driving um, that though? Like what's driving your decision? What's driving the work that you're doing? the people that you're serving, what, what is intrinsically driving you? What are your core values that are driving you? Like, what do you believe that makes the work that you're doing worth it? What, what do you believe that's making you, you as a father worth it? Like as a friend worth it? Like what's, what's making it all worth it? You know, that's a, it's kind of a tough question for me to answer because I feel like I, like th my only purpose here right now is to provide to everybody I come in contact with. Uh, I, 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 my purpose is to provide for my family financially. I, uh, it's my purpose is to be there as a father. My purpose is to help all these other people. I had a conversation with the mother of my children the other day and she, the conversation is very similar to that. And I said to her, I don't, I don't, I don't really, I mean, if you put it in purpose reason, if I define my exact purpose, I don't have one. Um, it, and, and again, it, it's like, it's like, I'm just doing the things that I know I have to do to support every single person in my life, to be there for them mentally, physically, financially to be there as much as I possibly can. And I get, you know, it's like these, if you, if you take a look at it like a pie, the pie of me is cut up into a, a bunch of pieces. And I feel like the piece that is supposed to be for me, like, like if you like, what, what, what am I here for, for me? Like, like what, what is it for Jeremy? That piece of the pie is so small right now in my life and there's other pieces that keep pulling and making that piece smaller and smaller and smaller and that's i'm confused i'm i question these things i i i, I know you know so so again the, 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 i'm a good i'm a good father i do everything and, and again this is what i sell myself so am i i think I, again i still think so there's way worse and I'm sure there's way better. I'm a good financial provider. I'm a good leader. I'm a good this. I'm a good that. I do this well. I do that well. But am I a good person to myself? I don't know if that's really true. I don't think I am. Yeah. And I don't, to be honest, I, two things, to be honest, I don't know if there's a way out. And I don't know if my purpose is to have a way out. Is my purpose to provide a, a stable environment for my children financially? They don't have to worry about anything. And the team that I'm around to all the lives I'm affecting. Am I here as a servant 
to serve every single other person out there and not myself? I don't know the answer to that question. And I, and, and that's probably the, the most realistic answer to that question is that I believe that I am here to serve every single person that I come in contact with and not myself. And that gets extremely difficult because the more people that are the one a piece of this pie, it gets thinned out for the most important people in my life. And I struggle with that. But then I think that I also think to myself, well, I'm in this position for a reason because I can handle these things and I am good at doing this. But at what point is enough enough? I, I don't I think so about that, too. Here's here's my question. You, you feel as if the your piece of the pie is small and even that small piece is being ripped apart by other people's demands, whether they're intentional demands or not. Do you really feel like in your heart of hearts, do you really feel that that's the best option? To be honest, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. And I, I really don't know. I, I mean, it's a valid question. And I want to say yes. Um, and I, or I want to say no, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know. And okay, let me ask you this. Two more. What what has happened in your life to where you believe that you have to be that person for everybody? Is it like, did something happen in your life to where there was a void in your life and you feel as if, if I don't do these things, then I am of no value. So that's my, that's my one question. And my other question is when it comes to purpose is this. Well, here, let me answer that one first. Cause I'll get, I'll forget about that. And that, that's important. Do I think anything in my life has in my past has happened? I would say um, yes, subconsciously, because um, you know I'm I'm again part of it is I'm five foot two, and this 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 narrative that I've been served my most of my life. But again, I'm like, what the hell, dude? You're you're forty three years old. You're extremely successful. At what point in your life you're going to say that has nothing to do with it? But maybe that's what drives me. Maybe that's the, you know, growing up in the neighborhood I grew up in. And, and maybe that I, I, I when you ask me, what was it that makes me feel like that? Maybe it's just this never ending chip on my shoulder that I'm just not good enough. I think a lot of people, and, and I would tell you this, I think a lot of people have that same feeling. But for me, man, that is a real ass feeling. Like I don't, uh, it's never, like there's no settle in me. There's no, there's no like I'm good here. And man, I wish there would be sometimes because I get so stressed out and, and I just, man, sometimes I just want things to stop. Like enough is effing enough, man. And, and, and having, having that mindset causes you to be unforgiving of yourself. Like you haven't even given yourself the room to figure out I would what, agree with that. What what is what is what is Jeremy like? You haven't even given yourself an opportunity to figure that out because you've been you've been Superman for everybody else. And it get like I, I want to encourage you to give give yourself room, like give yourself permission to figure that out because you can't really serve at a high capacity when you when you're empty. Yeah. You can't really can you you can't really serve at a level of excellence that you can afford if you if you're empty. Right. And so you have to, as a leader, as a father, as a partner, as a friend, as a manager, as a what all these different platforms that you want, like you, we have to, I'm saying you, but we like, we have to take the time, take a few steps back and reevaluate why we're doing what we're doing. And if, and, and if, and if that why is toxic, we have to do the work to dilute that toxicity. We have to, or else we're going to inadvertently spread that to the people that we are quote unquote serving. Right. It's exactly right. And, and, and I think I, I just need to make it. I mean, if I take anything away from this time and I've taken away a lot of your time away, but if I take anything away from this and, and I think all the listeners can, um, appreciate this as well. I, um, I have to 
physically and mentally schedule time to do nothing, to hit the reset button, to allow my brain and my body and my mind and my soul to, I mean, several things, to enjoy the things that I've done in my career, the successes, celebrate the wins, but to be at peace with where I am in my life and understand that, you know, if you look back to where I've been and what I've come through, and you know all my, you know, all my whole past, to get to where I am in my career, in my life is a, is a win. It's a success. And I don't ever settle on that, man. It's just like that. But I, but I, but I, I would also tell you this, and I, and I think this is why it's so good to have you on the show is that I need to make this intentional. I can talk about this and people listening to the show can talk about that and, and listen to, Hey, did you hear that show? But if I don't actually take action on these things, um, my, my, my reality, it's almost like if we're going to talk about going to the Christmas, it's almost like the Scrooge and you have the, the three things I'm going to end up dead. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be uh, going through my, my, my past life, my present life and my future life. What's that going to look like? And uh, if I don't take time now um, as the, as the uh, Scrooge that stole, or, you know, the screw, you know, that, that whole story, I'm going to end up, you know, running myself into a ground. And then, and then, but, but I have a chance and opportunity to be present, enjoy the fruits of my labor and enjoy life more often. But again, it goes back to taking action and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write down right now. And and I would encourage everybody listening to the show is to take time for myself. And, and I think for me, and I've got that trip coming up. I can easy make it easy that it's going to be based on all work. I'm going to try and do this and try and do that, but I'm going to be intentional about it to do time for me by myself. I think that's going to help. So you said this is a five day trip. You're going to be done by 12 PM every single day. Yeah. So between 12 and five, you're going to have uh, what tw- you for that five, you're going to have 25 hours that week to figure yeah. some stuff out. That's just from 12 to five, from five to whatever else. That's like, you can do whatever, but from 12 to whatever, five, yeah. yeah, from 12 to five, like you have, you have up to 25 hours that week to take time out for yourself. If you want to go get a pedicure, you want to, you want to yeah. go to the spa, like, like, li- listen, I'm saying I, I do this stuff. I take myself on dates, man. Like I, I, I have to man. I take <laughs> myself to the movie. I take myself out to eat. Like I'm, I take myself to the park. Like I, like I, I and I'm a married man with two kids, right? So it's like I, I have to do this, right? And so, um, and if 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 I could, if I could, if I could wrap up this conversation, right? If you would allow me to. Oh, absolutely. Um, here's a, here's a question that everybody that's listening or watching this, however you put it out, can answer. You know, you're talking about intentionality. Let's let's go in. What has your whole life prepared you to do? You're talking about purpose. You know, purpose is why we were created. Our assignment is how we demonstrate that in various environments. So if if our purpose is why we were created and our assignment is how we demonstrate it, the question is, what has your whole life prepared you to do? So now you got to go back through your experiences, no matter how traumatic they are, you got to go back through them and pull out those transformational principles that you learned and begin to um, deploy those principles in your everyday life. Because that stuff didn't just happen to you, it happened for you as well. So what has your whole life prepared you to do? Next, I I have my five pillar questions that I ask all my clients and I base everything that I do off of these five questions. And I wanna share with you today. Number one, what is your message? So once once you go back to your life and you pull out those transformational principles, what is your message? Not, Not just that, but who needs that? Who needs that message? And why do they need that message? Why are you the one to share that message? And how does that message transform lives. We've been talking about serving leadership the whole time. So now you have some action steps to take to see how you can employ your servant leadership going forward. 
part of that is taking some time to yourself. Another part of that is really understanding like why you're here. So you're not just this robot going through life every day. You know, you know, you mentioned that you're successful and you are. You mentioned that you have some things that you need to celebrate and you do. But now it's time for you to be like, okay, it's all about meaning now, like meaning for yourself. Because if you're not good, if your mental health is not good, if your physical health is not good, if your, if your total wellness is not good, then you're serving on an empty tank. You're serving from a toxic place. And you want to make sure that you're serving from, from a place of wholeness, right? Mm -hmm. So like, these are just things that I try to employ every day that I, that I teach on um, every week, no matter, you know, who I'm talking to, like this, why, like what, what has your whole life prepared you to do? And let's talk about these five pillar questions and begin to unpack that so that you can begin to see the, your, your significance while you're here on earth. You're not just here to put in work and leave. You're here to really have yeah. some significance, to leave a legacy that other people can live on, can build off of once you're gone. Uh, Jesse Cole, where can everybody find you? Well, you can go to um, Instagram, Coach Jesse Cole. I got some stuff on there. Facebook, you can go to Coach Jesse Cole, content on there as well. So um, those are the two areas you can go. I have a website, kingdommogulcoaching.com. You can go there um, as well. And we're also launching a program for um, aspiring Christian authors, speakers, and coaches who want to write their book in six months. We're launching that program too. So you can learn more about all that stuff on my social media. Again, it's a no brainer. Uh, I, I've told everybody this a thousand times and, and, you know, I'm probably one of your biggest fans by far, Jesse Cole. I love you like a brother. You know that. I mean, um, uh, every conversation we have, man, it just goes, it's, it's deep, it's fun, it's entertaining, it's uh, educational, it's informational and it's inspirational. And I absolutely love them. Uh, so everybody out there listening, man, re reach out to Jesse Cole, follow him on social media because uh, I share a lot of his stuff. I'm liking every single post he throws out there. I love the content. I love the meaning. I love the message. So Make sure you reach out to Jesse if you have any questions and hire him as a coach. I would, uh, I did. <laughs> I mean, flat out I did. And I would recommend you to do the same thing. Uh, I say it in every single episode. I appreciate you guys listening to this one, but you've got greatness within. Like always, this is The Positive Side.